Dear friends in Christ, I thank you sincerely for joining in today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word. Today is Saturday, the ninth day of March, 2024. It is Saturday of the third week of Lent. There is a story of a woman who told a priest she was leaving the church because the sins of the parishioners have become too unbearable. The priest put an egg on a spoon and told her to walk to the sanctuary and back with it without allowing the egg to fall. When she came back, he asked her, How many smokers and drunks did you notice? How many adulterers and extortioners were in church today? How many wife beaters, thieves, and liars did you see? She said, None. I didn't want the egg to fall because I was looking at it. The priest then said, Take this egg as Christ when you come to church. Look at him. Don't let him fall from your hands. With these words, I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egeme Yo Abu. Let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty ever living God, grant that as we study your word today, we may understand what we read, believe what we understand, and practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verses 15 to chapter 6, verse 6. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 51. And our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn that he may heal us. He has stricken and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the hands of my mouth. By the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than bond offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Bent offering from me you would, would not please you. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spawn. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. In your good pleasure, show favor to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifice, burnt offerings, holy, consumed. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Today, harden not your hearts, but listen to the voice of the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus told this parable to some 
who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. On Ash Wednesday, we heard Jesus say that we should not pray publicly to attract attention to ourselves. Pray secretly and God who sees you secretly will reward you. Today, Jesus gives us a parable of a Pharisee who in the name of prayer insulted a tax collector. The tax collector felt ashamed of himself. He stood at a distance and could not even raise his head. How do I resemble this Pharisee? What is my attitude towards persons I consider unworthy of heaven? When I beg for mercy, do I express sorrow for my sins? These are some of the questions we shall consider today. Number one, avoid comparing yourself with others. This parable teaches us to repent from vices such as using others to measure one's progress in life, making others look small and unimportant, talking about people in a bad light, praying against others, and so on. Repent from the philosophy of I better pass my neighbor. Avoid thinking you are nothing unless what you have is bigger, better, or more sophisticated or more expensive than others. Only compare yourself with who you were yesterday. Seek to improve, not to impress. Religion is between you and God, not between you and anyone else. Don't be like this Pharisee. Number two, remove the logs in your eyes before the specks in others. God is not a man who can be deceived. If you believe you have no sin, it is only because you have not yet examined your conscience and you are too busy analyzing the faults of others. Do you know if you would have done better if you were exposed to the same temptations they faced? Do you know their background, the kind of home training they got, the nature of scandals they were exposed to, and the battles they have fought? A lot of Nigerians cast aspersion on the presidents, the ministers, senators, governors, including myself. We cast aspersions on these persons at the helm of affairs of leadership and government in our country. But the reality is, if I am given the opportunity to be president of this country, Will I do better than Tinubu or perhaps Buhari or Jonathan or those who have been there before? I'm pointing fingers right now because I am not there. 
I'm not even prepared to be there. I'm not even trying to acquire the skills that I think are lacking in them. And yet, I condemn them as wicked, senseless, and, you know, thief-stealing leaders. If I'm given opportunity to sit on the kind of money that these people are sitting on, will I do better? Number three, pride casts a shadow on righteousness. The devil was the most perfect of all the angels. He had all the virtues but lacked humility. Pride is the most difficult vice to detect. Do you feel that some persons are not worth associating with or are not supposed to be in church at all, not to mention receive Holy Communion because of their lifestyle and bad habits? Then you are proud. Assuming you even discover that you are completely sinless, does this give you a right to praise yourself or select who comes to church or who stays out. Jesus says that anyone who exhausts himself will be humbled. Lesson number four. Help to bring them out of darkness. Many of us gossip about other people's faults, but we never try to help them repent. We may not have the courage to tell them the truth to their face, but we go about destroying their reputation. Jesus preached in the synagogues, but he knew those who needed him the most were not the church-going holier-than-thou hypocrites. He said, I came to call sinners, not the righteous, to repentance. If you are aware of someone's sin, but have never attempted to convert them, you have no right to shame them. Honey gathers more flies than vinegar. I mean, in this parable, was the Pharisee thinking that by praying like that, the tax collector will suddenly repent? You know, sometimes we shout on people, we, we talk down on them, we condemn them because we feel that they are bad and we are good. And that when we talk like that to them, then they will go into their shares, think twice and repent. But oftentimes it doesn't work that way. When we shame others, instead of them to repent, they just walk out and they walk out forever. They never come back. They never come back. When we show love to people, we are more likely to change them than when we show hatred to them or than when we try to shame them. Lesson number five. Never be afraid to pray when your conscience bites hard. Never be afraid to pray when your conscience bites hard. Sometimes we feel unworthy of approaching God's presence. We even skip our prayers or stay away from Holy Communion. This is a very serious mistake. Satan, the accuser of the brethren, confer Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, capitalizes on our guilt to make us wallow deeper and deeper in sin. Satan, the liar par excellence, confer John chapter 8 verse 44, tells us that God is angry with us and there is no need to pray. Meanwhile, God is waiting for us to return home like the father in the story of the prodigal son. The best time to pray is not when you feel like the Pharisee, when you think you have been doing well, but when you are in the shoes of the tax collector, that is the best time to pray. God does not reject the prayer of one who is humble and contrite, one who can honestly beat his chest and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
don't be ashamed to pray right after you realize you have sinned. Your heart may condemn you, but God will never condemn you. You may struggle to forgive yourself, but God has forgiven you. In today's first reading, God says through the prophet Hosea, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. May God bless his words in our hearts and may the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all both now and forever. Amen. <music>